All right, 8.1, graphing y equals ax squared. Now, they don't let me, like, write squared. So a to the x squared would look like this. Um, and then a would be just a number. x squared is x squared. Dang it, I forgot to put a warm-up. You're welcome. Yeah. Learning target. Students will be able to graph the, a function in the form y equals ax squared. So that's the main thing we're going to look at. How can we graph something that is in this form, y equals ax squared? Now, in the past, have you guys seen people use this for an exponent? No. Yeah. What? It's not good or bad if you have or haven't. Because when you go on Canvas and look at like our modules or even some things, sometimes some tests or quizzes, you might see that that little arrow is there, and that would just mean that we have something to a power. So that's all that is talking about. Oh, I didn't make a lot. You're off today, son. I am off today. I was so thrown. So disappointed. Uh, yeah, that was a lot of it. I will post these notes. I'm not posting these notes because technically this is a part of Algebra 1C, but I still can post the. Dang, you're not gonna yell at your kids. You're just gonna look at them and say I'm disappointed. Oh no, I'll spank my kids. That or smell at me and tell them that you're disappointed. And you're like, yeah, it's, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I just sit there and look at you, and you gotta walk to your room. All right, now they're posted. These notes are not posted though. They're just they're just up here. So first thing we need to look at when we have something. Yeah. Question. Um, first thing, a little bit of vocab. So we have, um, when we have a function that is to like the second power, we call it a quadratic. So a quadratic function, or something to the second power, is a non-linear function. So first, that idea of being non-linear, what would be something that is linear? What does linear mean? Linear just means a line. Okay, so we looked at functions in chapter five that we had our graph, and then it was a line. Okay, so they're saying a quadratic fun function or something that is squared is a nonlinear function, so it is not a line, and it can be written in standard form, which we've already looked at standard form. So standard form means a to the x squared plus bx plus c, and um, and a, b, and c would all be numbers. Right? Those are things that we've looked at. We've looked at like 2x squared plus 3x plus 7 or something like that. Um, so we're familiar with things that are in this form. These would be our polynomials. Now the only difference is now we're going to say y equals one of our polynomials and we're going to be able to graph them. Okay? What we're going to start out just looking at today will just be something that is y equals like 2x squared. So we're not going to have all this other junk along with it, but eventually we'll get to the more complex one. The U shape of the graph of a quadratic function is called a parabola. So all of these graphs will look like it says a U shape. It will look like this. Okay, it might be an upside down U as well, uh, but they will all have that U shape. And I don't think you guys have ever seen graphs in this form yet. You have seen problems before? Oh, that's true. Yep, yep, that's true. But I don't think you graphed them before. No. Okay. Perfect. So that's what we're going to start to look at. So, a couple of characteristics of a quadratic function. This picture would be a good thing to have written down. Um, but I'll go through a few of them while you're. Like it says, the most basic quadratic function is y equals x squared. Does anybody remember from chapter 5? This will be extremely impressive if someone can remember. Another name that we used for the most basic form of a function. Not just quadratic, but any function. Yeah, nice. A parent function. Somebody wants to get something. Uh, a parent function would be the 
the most basic or the most simple form of any type of function. The parent function that we looked at earlier was with a line, right? So a line that was y equals x, we said that was a parent function. We also looked at a parent function for absolute value. Remember, but, but, value? Which you'll get to review for your exam review. So y equals absolute value x. That's another type of parent function we looked at. Is there one more? Yeah, that's really hard to see. That is pretty bad. But you don't have to write that down. This is just a fun review. Wasn't there one more type of parent function we looked at? I can't remember. It'll come up. What? Like a dollar sign. A what? Like a dollar sign. I don't remember. It'll come up on our exam review, so we'll all get to remember. But anyway, I've, I've given enough time for you to draw a picture, so we'll actually talk about it. Um, first, on the far left, the lowest or high point of a parabola is the vertex. So you can see in this picture, the vertex would be right there in the middle, and it would be the lowest point of our parabola. Now, it says the lowest or the highest point. If our parabola is facing this way, facing down, if it was negative, then our, our vertex would be right here. So in that case, it would be the highest point on our parabola. So it just depends on which way it's facing, up or down. The vertical line that divides the parabola into two symmetric parts is the axis of symmetry. Okay, so you didn't think that we were going to start doing geometry or anything with symmetry yet, but here we are. What? What? So the axis of symmetry is what would split our parabola right in half. Okay, the axis of symmetry always passes through the vertex, which kind of makes sense if you look at the picture. Now the last thing. You can see in the red where our parabola would be considered to be decreasing. And on the right, it's it would be increasing. Okay, so even though, I mean, we're kind of looking at our x's, like the direction is coming from our x's, even though technically this is going up, 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 and you could say the y's are increasing, the x's are decreasing and continuing to get further and further negative. This idea of increasing makes more sense because the x's and the y's will just keep going and going and going and get larger and larger and larger. So we'll start to look at and ask questions about is this function increasing or is it decreasing? So if we look at a parabola, okay, there's a couple things that they will want you to know and be able to point out. Questions will ask you to find the vertex, the axis of symmetry, domain range, and then when is x, well, we'll get to those in a second. So first, what would what is the vertex? Negative where right? the u meets. Where the u meets, that's a good way to think about it, yep. Um, okay. The technical the definition that they gave us is the lowest point or the highest point. What did you say, Michael? Nothing, I just realized. Okay. No, what is the actual like vertex? What is the point of the vertex? Uh, negative one, negative two. Right, negative one, negative two. So a lot of these questions will tell you to give the vertex. Now, what is the axis of symmetry? This would be where things get a little bit more confusing, where we struggle, okay? What is the domain of, well, what does domain mean? Let's start there. We have talked about domain and range for a while. What does domain mean? Yeah, domain is the x value. So when we list our domain, we give all possible x values. So let's put it this way. Are there any x values that this parabola could not be? Yeah, Michael. Um, 
negative 6. It couldn't be negative 6. Well, if this kept, I mean, this arrow means that it's going on forever. So if this kept going, eventually we would hit. Oh, that negative 1. Negative 6. It couldn't be. It couldn't be 0. So here's 0. So we've got 0. It looks like negative 1. So this function does happen at 0. Hey, yo, what do you want to say? What? I don't, I don't know. No, that's okay. I like the guesses. So the domain, the x value, this it could be any x value. I mean, we could put anything in for x, or we could find any x value, or any x value could give us a y. Number. For domain, we would say it's all real numbers. I don't know if you remember all the way back to chapter 5, but that was the way that we could say all reals. The, the double bar r. Double bar r. The domain is spitting. Is what? Kind of. Now the range. What do we what do we talk about when we talk about range? Yeah, the y values. Is that, is that what you're gonna say, Corbin? Yeah. Okay. The y values. Now I'll clear up our graph because it's getting a little bit messy. Now are there any y values that this graph could not be? That this would not cover? Are there any y values that this would not happen on this graph? Negative 3. Negative 1, 2, 3, right here. Yeah, so this would never happen on this graph. <laughs> Negative 4 wouldn't. 5, 6, 7, anything below our vertex would not fit on this graph. We would never get a y value that is below our vertex on this graph. So when we're talking about the range, we say that the range is the range does happen between negative 2, right, because our vertex is here at negative 2, so it starts at negative 2, and it goes until and beyond. Yep. So I, I think we, well not I think, I know that we wrote domain and range in this form right here. The way that we would read this is negative 2 is less than or equal to y is less than or equal to infinity. Um, and that's just a nice way of saying that our range is anything higher than negative 2. Okay. And also includes negative 2. Do we, do we remember this form a little bit? Or does this look totally like we've seen it before but don't remember how to write it anymore? Okay, we'll have some practice with it. Now, the last two parts of this. This is where we deal with the increasing and decreasing function. So when x is less than negative 1, let me clear our graph. When x is less than negative 1, is our function increasing or decreasing? When x is less than negative 1. So here's our negative 1 line. When it's less than it, what does it tell us? Is it increasing or decreasing? Yeah, decreasing. In this case, it tells us. So that's really nice. On the other hand, when x is greater than negative one, we would be increasing. And I know we're probably still a little bit shaky on this idea of increasing or decreasing, um, but we will look at that a little bit more. The, the key thing is our parabola switches from either decreasing to increasing at our vertex. You can see we're decreasing, 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 and we hit our vertex and it starts to What questions do we have about those things so far? Okay. Now, this is a helpful picture right here to have, um, just to kind of get an idea of 
what our graph should look like. So why don't you get that picture down, take a minute to do that, and then I will talk about it. Also, while you're going through this, hey, remember, you can't use the notes on the exam, so you're going to want to take it and take notes. Um, while I'm thinking about it, on the exam, you will be allowed to use your paper notes. So anything that you've written down on paper, you can use. Now, it might be wise to, after you do the exam review, look at the exam review, to kind of make a not a cheat sheet, but like a formula sheet where all those formulas that you used on the review are in one spot. Because if you're spending half the time on the exam flipping through your notes trying to find different things, then that's going to take a lot of your time on the exam. So you might want to try to condense some notes and things like that onto one or two pages. If you have questions about your test, you can always stop in and see it again and ask me about it. All right, Robbie. Two more or like four more? <laughs> Three. You know what? Mm -hmm. oh. Will yeah. we be able to do test correction? Yeah, you can yeah. definitely do test correction. Uh -huh. Thank you. Yep, we're not going to take class time to do test correction. Yeah. Um, can I, at the end of class, can I take a picture of this and then I can do it on For the best ways to do that. Okay. Because I'd rather, and I'm not saying with you specifically, but just in general, I'd rather not have pictures of people having pictures of the tests and stuff. Oh, okay. But also, that might be the only way to do test prep. So if that's the case, then that's what we'll do. Okay. I'll have to think about that. If there's another way to get you the problem without having like full pictures of the test, mm -hmm. we'll see. Okay. okay. So, all that this is talking about in this image is when we have our parabola. There we go. We can have either a super wide parabola or a super no, not purple. What was it? Purple. Purple, yeah, good idea. We could have or have a super skinny parabola. And the width, I mean is it super wide or super skinny? That depends on what this a value is. Remember, our parabola is in the form y equals a times x squared. So depending on what this a value is, depends on how wide or how skinny our parabola is going to be. If our a value equals 1, that would be like our parent function. That's where we would get this blue parabola, which is you know, right in the middle and um, very, very consistent. If our a value, so if this front value is greater than 1, as you can see here, if A is greater than 1, then we will get a very skinny parabola. Okay? If A is greater than 1, that means it'd be like, I mean, it doesn't have to be a whole number to be practical, but it would be bigger than 1, so everything is growing super, super quick. So that's why we have a skinny parabola that is growing really fast. If A is between 0 and 1, so like a decimal, or a fraction, then that means our parabola is really wide, that it's growing really, really slow. All right, so that's all that picture is trying to show, and it's trying to help you remember. A is greater than one, that means that every time, whatever x is, we multiply by a whole number here for the a value, so it's growing super quick. Now, on the other hand, if we have an a value, so again, y equals a times x squared, and a is always going to be a number. If 
we have an A value that is negative, then everything flips over. Okay? Everything flips over. If we have a negative number that is between 0 and negative 1, then it is still very wide. It's just flipped over. So if you want to draw that picture again, you can. Or you could just make a note and say, you know, if A is negative, then everything flips. So we could have a regular U or an upside down. see A is between 0 and negative 1, it's still really wide. Oh, oh, I went out of order. We'll get to the class table. We might skip it, depending on time. I might just go straight to the practice. So here's a, a question that you might see, well, a very similar question to what you'll see on the practice. Graph y equals 2x squared. Okay, so remember, 2, if we if that's what our a value is, that would just be 2, right? Right in front of the x squared. Compare the graph to the graph of y equals x squared. So just like we did in chapter 5, they're going to give us something to graph, and they want you to compare it to that parent function. So we're going to go through what it means to compare. So First thing, when we need to graph one of these, something that we want to look to do is make a table. Okay? We want to make a table with our x values, which we get to choose, and our y values. Now, does anyone remember when we made a table in chapter 5, what three numbers did I tell you to use for your table? Go ahead. Uh, Corbin, give me one. Michael, give me one. Uh, a, a, a small and negative number? Right. So, like, what would be an example? Like negative one. Negative one. Michael, what were the other two? Positive one. Positive one and zero. and zero. Yep, so they went with negative two and positive two here, but really I would look to see these from you guys. Okay? So your table could just be x, y, negative one, zero, and one. Now remember, we take those x values and we plug them in for x. So like in this case, they took negative two y equals negative two. Y equals two times negative two squared. So negative two squared would give us positive four. Four times two gives us eight. So just like we did in chapter one, we plug our x value in for x, and then we get a y value. And then it asks us to graph. So we graph at zero, zero. So we put the numbers in our table, we graph it, and now we, they typically will ask these questions. What is the vertex? Who can tell me what the vertex is? What point is our vertex? Yeah. Zero, zero. What is our axis of symmetry? The way we would write that is x equals 0, because it's this vertical line, so it's 0, good. Now, if we compare it to the parent function of y equals x squared, now, the parent function would just be, I mean, start at 0, 0, and then go to 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, compared to this parent function, is it narrower? More narrow or is it wider? Our x, our y equals 2x squared. Wider. The green is wider than the yellow. Narrow. Narrow. Yeah. Narrower. Narrower. And we should know that without even looking at the graph. Right now, the direction told us to graph it, so we graphed it. But when we look at our a value up here, 
remember, we looked at right here that if our a value is greater than one, then it's going to grow faster. Then it'll be narrower than our parent function. So the graph shows us that the green is narrower. Um, also, we should go look at this equation and tell that hey, there's a, a positive. Well, there's a whole number, a number greater than one that's in front of the x, then it's going to grow way faster and it's going to be narrower. Um, let's see. We are going to... Let's see. Should we do the class pick? Should we skip the class pick? Skip. skip. Are you sure? Yeah. yeah. It's a really good one. It's about to be 840. It's what? It's about to be 840. It's already 840? Yeah, that was kind of a longer lesson than I wanted to be. Two.